Good morning everyone. It has been a long time since I've done a live. Um, it's been even longer since I've done a live showing you something. Um, but I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs and I'm doing this anyway. So I thought why not hop on and say hello uh, because it's been a minute. And let's talk wax and chalk paint. Um, so for those who don't know who I am, my name's Elise. I'm the owner and the artist behind the Paint of Brush & Co. Um, we are at 37 High Street in Eagle Hawk, Bendigo, Victoria. And uh, we are open today. We're open till 2.30. So if you're a local and planning to hop, hop in, um, please do. The doors are open, so if I have to stop, that's why. Um, but I thought, let's do a live. Um, I'm just sort of trying to get through a few of these little projects that I sort of started and haven't really done anything else with. Um, this one I started November, December last year and we're now in what, May? So five months later, we're finally getting there. Um, but I do that a lot. I'll have like paint left over on my brush and I'll whack it on something and then never go back to it. So this beautiful vase has got this stunning carved detailing. Um, it was originally, the bottom still, like this off, not black, but it's like this um, dark brown colour. Um, and I originally, I base and blockered it, and I think I actually did a video base and blockering it, um, which is our primer. It should be a bit more clear, it's been a while. <laughs> um, Pure Eco base and blocker, it's a primer, it helps our paint stick. So I definitely cleaned it, I always clean. Uh, hot soapy water to clean. I then uh, scruff sanded. I always scruff sand vases. Uh, it just helps your paint stick, gives something else for the paint to grab onto. Uh, particularly something like this that is quite smooth. Um, even though we've got the detail here, it, is, it was still a very smooth vase. So I've um, given it a scruff sand, 80 grit. It's not going to do as much as what it would do, say, on a piece of timber furniture but it's still going to scruff it up a little bit and it doesn't hurt. Base and blockered. Um, I used Pure Eco's base and blocker in the color gray. Uh, that's what I had open at the time. And then at some point after doing that and, well, like a couple of months ago, um, it did get a coat of Pure Eco silk finish in the color inkwell. I got one coat. It was just what was left on my brush at the time, so it wasn't a lot of paint. It wasn't very good coverage, obviously, because there wasn't a lot of paint on my brush. Uh, and since then, it has sat at the bottom of these shelves behind me, um, and it's just sort of chilled out. Until yesterday, when I had some Pure Eco chalk finish, which is this one here, um, in the colour Reef, which is this really, really beautiful blue, um, on my brush. And I'm like, well, and the jar is still open. So I thought, well, let's paint it and get it finished finally. And while I was at it, one of my very last lives from last year, I used to go live every Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. Um, one of my very last lives from last year, we painted, this is the top of a table, and we actually took the base off. And the base I did, it's long gone, it's already sold. Um, base I did an ombre of I think it was inkwell and peacock which are these really really beautiful blues um, and I sold it as a plant stand and this is the top and originally I painted the top with um, harbour which is where's my harbour gone which is this one here really nice blue you can see that difference um, so I originally had a coat of that and I was going to do Another coat of that, except I can't find my jar of harbour. So I thought, well, let's whack some reef on this, close enough. And then this morning I've cleaned it up and I have very gently distressed it just a little bit. Some of the harbour's coming through, some of the timber underneath. Um, and now that's ready. I'm actually gonna find some feet to put on it. So um, I'm gonna use some timber knobs. I've got stacks of them. So later on today, I'm gonna go through my little stash and find some knobs just so it's Got some feet. I think it's a nice serving board or centre of the dining table sort of thing. So I did that yesterday and this morning. And then, yeah, last night as well, I also painted this. So today I thought let's 
do some waxing and because it's got this really nice carved detail, let me bring it closer so you can really see it. It's got really, really nice carving. And when I've painted this, I've also sort of let the paint dry and then gone back over it with my brush. And I don't think the camera is showing that very well. My phone has just about had it, so it's not picking up the detail as well. But when my paint was almost dry, I then sort of cross hatched across it as well, just to give a little bit more texture to my chalk finish, which is why I love chalk finish, because you can really easily build that texture. Um, so today I'm gonna wax it, and I'm gonna be using Pure Eco's Liquid Wax, which is these ones here. This is like, um, I'll show you. It's like a really thick moisturizer body butter. It's really nice. Um, it's actually beautiful for your skin as well. Um, whenever my hands are feeling a bit dry, I, um, and I don't have hand cream on me, I do use a little bit of this. It's really, really beautiful. Um, it's all natural, of course. And um, so we're gonna be using the liquid wax in clear. And I was going to use it in white, but I can't find my white. So instead we're gonna use black, which is fine. Um, but we're going to use the clear first so that our black doesn't just soak in um, and turn this like a really dirty, color which is what I'm trying to avoid I just want a little bit not too much so um, chalk finish is porous it has to be sealed um, it is not optional you have to seal chalk finish it will mark very very easily without being sealed so we're going to seal it first with the white uh, uh, sorry with the clear uh, which will stop our black from full-on soaking in the black's sort of going to sit over the top of it um, and give us that little bit more maneuverability with the black as well. To apply, I'm just using a chip brush. If you do loads of waxing, let me see if I've got one. Mine's at home, but if you do a lot of waxing, I highly recommend the Pure Eco um, tapered um, wax brushes. These are amazing. They are a little bit pricey. I won't lie, they are a little bit up there, but they are amazing and if you are doing a lot of waxing, highly, highly recommend. These are $6, I think. I can't remember. Uh, they're on our, on our website. They are fantastic, but they do fall apart. So if you're doing a lot of waxing, I definitely recommend investing in a really good wax brush. Otherwise, these are fine for what we're doing today. So we're just going to take a little bit of our wax and you will notice the color will change a little bit as we go um, so we're going to bring out the true color and all you're going to do first is brush that wax on and you're just sort of going to swizzle it around get it in all those grooves there we go turn around it's one of these this is one of those pieces that's probably a little bit hard because of the shape and you're just gonna get that wax all over. It doesn't matter sort of if you miss bits, you just wanna do the best that you can to get that wax really, really um, well covered, or the piece really well covered, I should say. So the liquid wax can also be used over Pure Eco's Silk Finish, um, which is their all-in-one paint, which means it has a built-in top coat. Uh, the liquid wax contains and, hang on, side note. Can you see my brush falling apart there? This brush has been pretty heavily used and it's definitely at the end of its life. And this is why I do recommend the really good quality ones uh, if you are doing a lot of waxing. A little bit here and there, this is fine. Um, but this is why I do recommend the good ones. Um, so yeah, Pure Eco Silk Finish, built-in top coat. The liquid wax has a natural oil in it which allows it to dry. Uh, which means that it can be used over silk finish as well. Um, and I absolutely adore the waxes. Uh, the liquid wax in particular is my favorite. There is a new wax coming as well at the end of this month, which I'm really excited to share with you all. There's been a few little sneak peeks, but we haven't sort of shown anything else yet. So I will wait a little bit longer to sort of share any more on that. Uh, but the liquid wax, absolutely beautiful. As I said, it's got that natural oil, so it can dry and it can go over silk finish as well. So I could do this 
over silk finish. Because silk finish has that built-in top coat, it does stop the wax from soaking in as much, so you don't necessarily need to do a clear wax first either when you're doing something like this with the dark wax or with the black. We're just gonna brush it all in there. I'm just gonna try and get as good a coverage as I can. Doesn't matter if you miss bits, as I said, you're about to buff this and um, that's gonna spread the wax out as well. We just wanna try and get it as good as we can. So once you've got your wax all over, you can see that wax just sitting on that surface. Now, you're going to take any form of lint-free cloth you like. Um, from experience, I don't recommend old socks. I find they do leave actually quite a lot of lint, but again, it could just depend on the sock. Um, but any form of lint-free cloth is fine. I'm just going to use a uh, microfiber. I really like these ones. These are from Aldi, um, and they're really, really good quality. They normally come in a 50-pack for, I think they're like $15, $16 which is really good value as well. But all we're gonna do now is you're just gonna take that cloth and you're going to wipe over your surface and remove most of that wax. It doesn't matter if we leave a little bit on there because we are about to go back over with our black as well. But you just wanna keep moving it around and rubbing off that wax as best you can So that majority of it is off your surface. You don't want it to feel really, really waxy. It shouldn't be really slippery and waxy still once you've sort of buffed it. Most of that should be gone. And then you'll have this really nice surface at the end of it. So we're pretty well buffed. You can see there's still some on there. Obviously, we're going to be a little bit shiny. There's fresh wax on there. But I'm just going to flip it upside down so I can get this bottom bit a little bit better. Just sort of feeling it anywhere that's really feeling quite slippery and like there's a lot of wax still on it. We're just going to give it a little bit more. Feeling beautiful. All right, now I'm going to go in with our black. And we've done our clear first so this doesn't soak in heaps. Now we're only using a little bit. Tiny, tiny little bit. So I've literally just dabbed that on the top of this. And I'm going to focus on this detailing. And let me see if I can bring you a little bit closer. So you can sort of see what we're doing. And I'm just sort of going to push that in there. You can do this sort of however you like. But I really just want this on that detail. And I'm going to do this all the way around. You can, again, go any direction you like. Now, just note as well, once you have wax, you need to remove that wax if you want to repaint um, or if you want to use a top coat or anything like that on it as well. Once wax is on, nothing can go over the top of it. But you can remove this wax with some really hot soapy water. It doesn't have any nasty solvents in it and our hot soapy water does get the wax off nicely. Okay, oops, I forgot that line. So we might end up sort of putting this wax all over it a little bit because there is quite a lot of detail here. But we're just gonna keep working our way around like so. And we're sort of just swishing our brush to get that wax into all of those little grooves. And this is just gonna help highlight some of this detail. At the moment, it's quite hidden. So we just wanna bring it out a little bit. I'm not looking to highlight every single little section of it, but just most of it. Okay. I'm just sort of loosely gonna 
Swipe that over. And at the moment, I'm just sort of using what's on the brush to get this next layer. And we can still go back in and you can keep layering this and building this up if you want it to be that little bit darker as well. So again, we're just gonna sort of swish it around. Some bits are gonna be a little bit darker, some bits are gonna be a bit lighter. And this will all even out a little bit as well when we come through um, with our cloth in a minute as well and buff it. But we really just wanna push that wax into there best we can. I'm trying to make sure, oh, hang on. <laughs> we're sliding out of the shot, sorry. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see what we're doing. If you miss any of this as well, it will be up on our YouTube. I'll get it up there today. Um, as I said, I'm not doing a whole lot today. It's pretty quiet at the moment. Retail wise, we're pretty quiet in store. So I'm, um, if I'm not twiddling my thumbs, I need to do something. All right, so we've got our wax on there. It's looking pretty ugly at the minute, but now we're gonna buff it. So again, same cloth is fine. And we're just going to gently wipe it. And we're sort of just gonna do this initial wipe over. And then we're gonna go back through it and start to really buff it as well. So this, the clear wax is really just stopping that wax from really, really soaking in and just makes it that little bit easier for us to maneuver it around and gives us that little bit more leeway with it. So we're just really, little bit of elbow, and we're just really, really rubbing that, okay? And things like down the bottom here, so we don't end up with this sort of dirty line there. We just wanna make sure, rub up and down a little bit, which is gonna spread that wax out as well. And it's also gonna help remove that line. So we've still got that detail happening, but now we don't have that dirty mark there. Pretty good. So, and as I said, you can go back through if you just want a little bit more. Go back through. And as I said as well, this does dry. So if you want to leave it that little bit heavier, it will dry. And now you can really see that detail. It's not super heavy, but it's just enough that we can see it all. And you can just sort of keep playing around with it. You can then layer if you want the white wax. Um, we've got a brown as well, so you can layer any of those if you want to. Um, and you can keep building those colors as well, or you can create your own color. So that's looking really, really nice. So for wax, um, I like to give it a couple of days, just let it do its thing, 24 hours, 48 hours, do its thing. And then I like to come back and give it another, um, just another light buff, not really heavy handed, just enough that if there is any wax still sitting on that surface, and I do this for every single piece, if there's still wax sitting on that surface, light buff is just enough to remove any excess that's still sitting there. If it's still sitting there after 24, 48 hours, that wax isn't soaking in. It's just gonna keep sitting there and eventually it will just end up like a sticky mess. So it never hurts to give it another buff just to make sure that it's perfect and ready to go. So there we go, that's our waxing for today. Beautiful, nice, simple, looking gorgeous. You know what, let's, I'm doing it anyway. Let's wax this timber as well of this uh, serving board. And then I will go find something else to do. Uh, let me put that there. All right, so this is our board. I have gently, oh, can you see? 
definitely distress the edges just a little bit. As I said, you can see some of the harbor coming through and you can see some of the timber coming through. Um, I've cleaned up this rim as well with the um, with some sandpaper is the word that I'm looking for. Let me just grab a, it's a bit of a crusty cloth. It's from hemp oil, but I'm just gonna clean some of that black off my brush. I don't want heaps of that black coming out. I don't mind a little bit. We're just gonna wipe some of that off. There we go. The black will stain the bristles a little bit, you will find. You could, of course, wash this brush with some hot soapy water as well if you wanted to. Okay. Oops. Now I've got really greasy hands. As you can see, I use these cloths for everything. So we're going to go in with our clear liquid wax again. And I'm just going to do the clear on this. I don't want to do the black. So, oops, how else if I take that bit off too? Clear liquid wax. Take a little splodge of it. Now, I already know this timber is quite thirsty. I think it's a cedar and it is very thirsty. When I was just cleaning it before with some water, it was just sucking it up. So, you can see, and you would be able to see more if I moved the camera with you. <laughs> Tilt it down. There we go. That's better. Now you can see what we're doing. <laughs> so you're just gonna wipe this wax on, and this is why I like wax as well, because you can literally just go in any direction you like. Gonna get these edges, and I will do the underside as well. Uh, I'm just gonna do this top bit for right now while I'm showing you. Uh, and I'll do the underside a bit later once I've glued some little feet onto this tray. I'm all going well. If I get this done today, I will have the finished photos up today too, which will be a nice change. If you ever have any questions, let me know. Always happy to help. So we're just sort of brushing that on all over. You can see it's a little bit patchy, but that's fine. You just want to get it as well covered as you can. And then what we're going to do for the timber, and this is my favorite thing to do with timber, I do it with hemp oil and with um and with wax, is I take, oh, there's no point showing you, it doesn't say, um, thousand plus grit sandpaper, the finest you can get. And then I just really gently, you can really go in any direction and you're letting the wax and the sandpaper do the work. You're not putting any elbow into this, but you just really, really gently sanding. And this knocks back the timbers fibers, which naturally stand up when they get wet. Um, so think of them flat. When they get wet, they stand up and they get stuck. So doing this, just knock those fibers back lovely, really lovingly, really gently without damaging them, without scratching. And it gives you that baby bottom smooth finish that we love on timber. And every single bit of timber that I do here, I do this technique, either with the hemp oil, which is, I've got a bottle here that I can show you. Oh, oh no. There goes everything. <laughs> uh, hemp oil and with wax, okay? So you can do it with both, exact same technique. Wipe it all over and then just give it a really light sand and just let that sandpaper do the work. Just like so. All right, and then we come through it with our this is the right cloth here. Come through with your cloth again. And again, and with timber, any direction you like, it doesn't matter, you're not scratching the timber. The only time direction really, really matters with timber is when you're initially sanding it and when you're taking a varnish off it, um, making sure that you're going with the timber. So with the timber grain, which is the lines in the timber, so that you don't accidentally um, 
scratch it because when you go against the grain, uh, you can really, really scratch it. I'm just going to spread a little bit more there. I can feel my cloth grabbing it. I think I was actually going to stencil this, but it doesn't matter. I'm doing this now. I think I was going to stencil this with something, but I quite like like this as well so it's like this now because I'm not removing the wax so just like that and you just sort of keep rubbing it until it doesn't it shouldn't feel waxy anymore um, it might feel a bit cold um, might feel like there's something still there but it shouldn't feel really really waxy have a feel of it when you first put the wax down it shouldn't feel like that and it should look pretty even as well. So when you sort of hold it up, you'll be able to see if you get the sun on it just right, if it's something that you can hold up, obviously, um, and you get it just right, you should be able to see if you've missed bits as well. Even just shining like a light on it can help sometimes. Some timbers are really easy to see and other timbers are a little bit harder, just like that. And then we're just going to wipe over our edges as well. Just remove that excess wax, giving it a good buff with our cloth. Just like so. Isn't that timber? Stunning. It's so beautiful. So the bottom of this, I'm not gonna wax yet. It will be waxed, but I'm gonna pop the legs on it first, the feet. Um, I'm gonna go have a dig through my little stash and see what I can find. And then I'm going to, I think I'll screw them in and glue them just to make sure. Just some little ones, just enough to lift it up. Just because it's such a big piece, I feel like sitting flat on the table's a bit, a bit too flat. It needs a little bit of a lift. Um, but yeah, that's what we've done today. Thank you all for joining me. So that was Pure Eco's Liquid Wax in clear, which looks white in the jar, but it is a clear and in black. So these waxes are also available in a dark, which is a brown, and in a white as well. So um, that's the waxes over chalk finish and over some beautiful timber as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've learned something. If you've got any questions at all, please let us know. Um, have an absolutely wonderful day and we will see you next time. Bye everyone. I don't think